Okay, running style. Now, I got a great question in the comments. And running style is something we all think about because whether you're out there running with a group or on your own, or you see a race, you'll see many different styles. Everybody has their own way of running. And to some extent, as I answered this comment, we run the way that we run. But let's listen to this comment. Great video, mate. I have a technique question for you. I've been told that I have a unique ring technique. I'm concerned that if I continue to run with my current technique, I could be at a higher injury risk and also basically may not be moving forward with speed and efficiency as well as you should be. Now I love these questions because not only are you into running, which you know is my biggest love, but also you're thinking about how you can move forward as optimally as possible. Not just with running, but in everything that you do. And this is the mentality that you should always have. But what's the answer to that question? Now to some extent, as I said, we run the way we run. So we're naturally runners, hunter-gatherers, persistence hunters, and there's a reason that we're very good at running. You know, we can outrun a gazelle on the African savannah. We can persistence hunt because we've got a great cooling system. The, if you look at the, the arch of your foot, it's bouncy, but it's also a shock absorber. There are many things that make us great runners, but that doesn't mean running will come naturally to you if you've been sat behind a laptop for the last 35 years. But how do you improve your style? That's what everybody wants to know. Now, the way, and I constantly, I'm constantly practicing my style, whether that's in a long run, an interval session running fast, or a recovery run, an easy run. But if you can do something slow, like recovery runs and easy runs, and you can practice, you practice your running and practice what I'm about to say, it's gonna come way easier when you run faster and when you run further. When you run faster, what you're going to realize is that you cannot let the glutes not do the work. So in other words, the glutes have to fire. They have to do the work whether that's propelling you up a hill or propelling you to run fast during an interval. So you'll realize that the bigger the muscles and the big power muscles like the glutes and the hamstrings, the more work they do, the less energy that you have to move, that you have to use moving forward. The next thing that I'll say is that if you can think of yourself constantly as what is my style? What is it currently? What am I doing wrong? What does it look like when I'm thinking about it compared to other styles? And it's good to get on a treadmill and look at a mirror and see what's going on. Because sometimes your arms will be coming out and you're kind of like, you don't need to be there. Sometimes there's a lot of twisting motion going on, which is like unnecessary energy spent here. And it's gonna twist your lower back, twist your hips. And also if you're, if you're like this, then what are your knees doing? Think to yourself, okay, I wanna be landing mid-foot. Why? You don't wanna be landing on your toes unless you're sprinting, unless you're running less than 400 meters. If you're landing mid-foot, it's efficient to run in distance running. And most people on this channel are looking to run 5K all the way up to ultramarathon. If you're running mid-foot, the transition is easy for you. You're not landing on your heel and so sending a jolt through your body and so your bones and muscles are all getting that jolt on every. It's every step. It's, it's mid-foot and it's an easy transition to toe. And then the next point, you need to make sure that your toe, ankle, knee, hip is all aligned. The reason you need to do that is because if you think about the primary or the most common injuries in running, and it's repetitive injuries most of the time, it's because of things like we're not using the knee as it should be as a hinge joint. If your toe is aligned with your hip, which will mean that your knee is aligned, very difficult to use that as anything else, but as it's supposed to be used as a hinge joint. So use your, use your knee as a hinge joint. Make sure your push off behind, when you're looking where your toe and foot is going, make sure that that's behind you. You might have to set up a camera on a treadmill behind you to see how you run, and from the side, and from the front, the front so you can see how you run and what you need to. And then it's a case of practice. But if you land mid foot, and your toe, ankle, knee, hip is all aligned, and you think about your arms that are coming up like this, 
and they're sort of, of course, you can keep them straight, but you've got to negate the rotation of the body. And there is a slight rotation because as you step on your right foot, then of course your hips are slightly tilted. And again, as we rotate onto our left foot, our hips again are rotating. And so the body adjusts for that nicely. So if you bring your arms up and just get used to them as light as possible, and I like to literally hold my fingers like this. So it's not kind of, you're not kind of like fist running like this and you're trying to, you know, that's unnecessary energy. Again, over distance, that compounds. Just keep light and smooth. And think, just like the book, Born to Run, smooth, light, equals fast. If you conquer smooth and light and you become a smooth, light runner, that's why I'd say start with your easy runs and recovery runs, then naturally you'll become a better runner. But it takes practice. And if you're, cer if you're running a certain way at the moment, a certain style, and you need to re-practice another style, it's not gonna be overnight. It might take you 20 or 30 runs. It might take you the next six months. But the benefits of you not getting injured and as you said perfectly in your comments, becoming a more efficient and faster runner, they're endless. And you will have that for the rest of your life. So style always counts. And you want to constantly be thinking, am I moving over the ground as efficiently and effective as possible? And smooth, light, fast really helps you think of that. If you've got any questions about that, then drop a comment below. And if you got anything from this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Cheers.